Democracy is sometimes a messy business. We're seeing that in Salem right now as the Oregon Senate is at a standstill, brought to an abrupt halt by Republicans who walked out. Only two Republicans showed up today, giving the Senate 18 members. That's too short of the 20 they need for a quorum. And without a quorum, they can't legally do business. Here's what it was like in Salem this morning. The clerk will please call the roll. Thatcher, Weber, absent, Bonham, Boquist, Finley, Hayden, Linthicum, 18 ayes. The call is terminated. The quorum is not present. So that was that. Remember the good old days when the legislature started way back on January 17th? They promised what seemed like a love fest between Democrats and Republicans. Well, that's over. The Senate president, Democrat Rob Wagner, and the minority leader, Republican Tim Canope, used to meet every week. Turns out that stopped a month ago. It's disappointing to me that we haven't had the opportunity or we haven't been afforded the opportunity to sit down in advance of some of these, you know, parliamentary tricks that we're seeing to actually talk about substantive issues. We started this legislative session by co-authoring several pieces of legislation. Um, Senate Bill 2, Senate Bill 3, we've co-carried bills together. Um, but again, I think what, you're, what you've seen is that as the House has started to take up fundamental freedoms around reproductive health, um, mm -hmm. th those conversations um, have actually not occurred in the last couple weeks. Um, Senator Canope has actually canceled those meetings, um, starting with actually the morning of our regular meeting. Um, it was interesting because there was a cancellation of that, and then it was clear that they went out and then published a press release right after that. So um, you, you can see that, as Senator Lieber said, this is part of a playbook um, that, that we've had, and it's just another attempt to s sort of try to uh, distract people from the real issue here, and that is after Dobbs, when you see what's happening in this country, yeah. Oregonians want to protect reproductive health, and, um, and that's what we came here to do. Now, for his part, Senator Canope argued that no, 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 the issue forcing the walkout is not about reproductive rights. It's about following the rules. We're not walking out just for those bills. We're pressing pause on this session because every single, almost every single bill has a problem. As I mentioned, in the last two days where we had bills on the floor, only one passed with the 64 on that scale, only one. And so it's, it's important to us that if we're gonna have laws, that we should obey those laws. If we, you know, if we have Senate rule, uh, and the courts have said many times, Senate rule uh, can trump statute, especially as it relates to uh, process. And so if we're gonna have rules that have been adopted, we should follow those rules. Now, when he says scale, he's talking about a readability scale. Now, I know that you do like deep dives on things like this, so we are going to dive deep. Here's an explanation on the rule that Canope says he's concerned about. Republicans say the bill summary for that contentious abortion bill, for example, violates Senate rules, state laws, and the state constitution because it's not written simply enough for all Oregonians to understand. Here's the stipulation when it comes to the bill summary language. The state constitution section they refer to is Article 4, Section 21. It says, acts to be plainly worded, every act and joint resolution shall be plainly worded, avoiding as far as practical the use of technical terms. When it comes to the Senate rule book, they're focused on Rule 13.02, which has five different parts, but the GOP is focused on the fifth part. It reads, all summaries must comply with ORS 171.134. And here's what that state law says. By the way, it was passed back in 1979. The title is Readability Test for Legislative Digest and Summaries. Any measure digest or measure summary prepared by the Legislative Assembly shall be written in a manner that results in a score of at least 60 on the flesh readability test or meets an equivalent standard of a comparable test. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd never heard of such a thing. But it's real. And the readability test measures how difficult it is to understand the language and the kind of writing. So the higher the score, the more understandable a text is. The lower the score, the harder it is to understand. So that 60 score that the state law mandates, that's about around the eighth grade reading level. 
So I hadn't heard of that bill summary issue. I figured let's pull up the software and give it a try. Right now we're looking at House Bill 2002. I'm gonna copy the summary here, put it into the Flesh Kincaid calculator, let it calculate the ease of reading. Ooh, look at that, it's 15.4. That's not great. It's supposed to be 60 or above. It tells us you'd need to be a college graduate or above to be able to understand this. And then we'll go to the next one, Senate Bill 4. This was the big one on the semiconductors. Let's copy this, put it into the readability calculator, see how they like this one. Ooh, also not great, 24.1. Again, it's supposed to be a 60. This shows you'd need, again, to be a college graduate to understand it, very difficult. Here's a bill that both sides really like. This is allowing self-service for gas. Let me capture this, we'll copy it over, put it in the calculator, see how this works. It's really short. Oh, <laughs> that's one of the worst scores we've had so far, 4.1. It's supposed to be a 60, not a 4.1. That shows really hard to read, really hard to understand. And here's a bill that Senator Canope sponsored that uh, prohibited the state from paying out-of-state employees to come back to work in Oregon. Let's put that in, see how that We'll calculate that. Oh, that's the worst reading score of all of the four that we picked, 3.8 here. And again, it's supposed to be a 60. Also being scored very difficult to read. So that's kind of an eye-opener, I think. The Republicans today asked a judge to stop the legislature, stop it completely, because of the reading scores on those summaries and others, and he said, no, not going to do that. When it comes to walkouts, things have changed in Oregon, by the way. Last year, voters approved by a two to one margin, a change in the state constitution. It now bans a lawmaker with 10 or more unexcused absences during any legislative session from holding that office following the end of their current term. So you miss 10, you can't come back until you sit out a term. So if I'm the Republican leader, I'm thinking about how many people do I have? So 12 Republicans, one independent, and I'm also thinking about how many days in a row can they miss and do they have to miss all those days in a row or can we have some people show up and still deny them a quorum? They need 20, we can give them some, we can give them three people every day and still not get to that 20. Okay, so let's draw this out and see how far we can drag it out. We're gonna use letters for people. Okay, so there's 13. So on this first day, we'll use G for people who have to go and S for everybody else who skips. Go, go, go. So these are the people who are gonna skip. Everybody else gets to skip this day. But then on the next day, these three have to go and everybody else gets to skip. So skip, skip, skip. Next day, these three go. About every fourth day, they have to show up. Go, go, go. Okay, let's see how far we are now. So this guy goes, then the rest can skip. So we can go one more row. These three go here, go. If they started today, because yesterday a lot of people had excused absences because the, the Democrats didn't see this coming. Um, so if we just start with a blank slate today, they could go 11 more days and only have some of their members with eight unexcused absences, assuming they don't have any already, and about half of them would have nine. So they'd be in danger. You don't want 10. But they could drag this out another 11 days. 11 days. You like my board? Pretty fancy, huh? Now, to counter the Republicans, the Senate president has said, okay, you wanna play hardball? Guess what? We're gonna meet every day. That includes Saturday and Sunday. So, if they do that, the Republicans will have to cave, probably by my collection, recollection, around the 14th, so Mother's Day, or they're gonna start losing members to that 10-day rule. So, here's what we've learned here. First, yes, there is a rule about the summaries and they have to be readable, and no, no one follows that. Second, the walkout is not about the rule, it's about the bills. Third, Republicans have no other tools, so they're using the walkout. Three, four, finally, they have to be careful because if they miss 10 days without permission, they're out at the end of their term. Interesting stuff, don't you think? Here's my opinion on this. First, to claim the walkout is over the wording of a summary for proposed laws is clearly a bunch of baloney. 
There are problems with the summaries. We showed you that. But if Senator Canope was truly disturbed by this down to his core, he would have made sure that the bill he sponsored was easily readable and followed that rule. Instead, it got the worst score of the four bills that we checked. So let's stop pretending. It's about the bill summaries, because it's not. This is about Republicans wanting to block the bill that clarifies the rights of women to get abortions and other care in Oregon and makes insurance companies pay for gender affirming care. It's also about a gun control bill that would make it illegal for anyone under 21 to buy a gun in Oregon with some exceptions for shotguns for, or rifles for hunting. Those under that age who already have a gun would be exempt. The bill would also outlaw so-called ghost guns, which are untraceable. So that's what this is really about. The Republicans don't like those bills. They don't have the votes to stop it either. So should they be walking out? Well, they'll tell you, as they've told me over the years, that their job is to represent their voters and the best interests of the state in the very best way they can. Right now, they believe their only tool left is to walk out. Okay, I respect that. Even without talking about the merits of the bill that they're against. And yes, the Democrats have used walkouts themselves, even before the Republicans in Oregon history. But since voters passed the constitutional change last year, Republicans are on the clock. They've made their statement now. If that was their point, it is time to get back to legislating. What are you thinking about all this? Send an email, will you? The address is the story at kgw.com or call and leave a voicemail. Our phone number is 503-226-5090. I look forward to hearing from you.